Hello everyone. Welcome to Gnana Diksha Concept Based Digital Learning. Hope you all are doing well and preparing well. Today we are going to learn about plant growth and development. Before going to this session, let me tell you the learning outcomes. After completing this module, you will be able to understand how the growth occur in plants. You will learn various types of plant hormones and you will also understand functions of hormones and photoperiodism. My dear students, what is growth? Can we define growth? Growth is fundamental character of living organism and we define growth as an irreversible permanent increase in size of an organism or its parts or even of an individual cell. Growth is accompanied by both catabolic and anabolic processes that occur at the expense of energy. For example, expansion of a leaf is growth. How would you describe the swelling of piece of wood when we placed in water? For example, if the piece of wood placed in water, what happens dear children? It swells and increases its size. But later it also decreases its size. So this is not growth. My dear students, in previous year, you studied about the root apical meristem and the shoot apical meristem. You know that they are responsible for the primary growth of the plant and contribute to the elongation of plants along their axis. You also know that in dicotyledonous plants and gymnosperms, the lateral meristem, vascular cambium and cork cambium appear later in life. These are the meristem that cause the increase in the girth of the organs in which they are active. This is known as secondary growth of the plant. Growth is conspicuous, means obvious to the eyes and do you know growth is measurable means growth is measured by a variety of parameters some of which are increase in fresh weight dry weight length area volume and cell number you may find it amazing to know that a single maize root apical meristem can give rise to more than 17500 new cells per hour while cells in a watermelon may increase in size by up to 3,50,000 times. In the farmer, growth is expressed as an increase in cell number. The latter expresses growth as an increase in the size of the cell. While the growth of a pollen tube is measured in terms of its length, an increase in surface area denotes growth in dorsi ventral leaf. Next. We will discuss phases of growth. The period of growth is generally divided into three phases. They are first one meristematic phase, second one elongation phase and third one maturation phase. Let's discuss in detail and understand these phases by looking at the root tips. In meristematic phase of growth, in the root apex and the shoot apex, the cells are dividing constantly. The cells in these meristematic region are rich in protoplasm and possess large conspicuous nuclei. Their cell walls are primary in nature, thin and made up of cellulose with abundant plasmodes metal connections. The cells proximal means just next away from the tip to the meristematic zone represent the phase of elongation. In this elongation phase, Increased vacillation, enlargement of cell and new cell wall depositions are observed. Further, away from the apex that is more proximal to the phase of elongation lies the portion of axis which is undergoing the phase of maturation. The cells of this maturation zone attain their maximal size in terms of wall thickening and protoplasmic modifications. Next, we will discuss about growth rates. Growth rate means the increased growth per unit time is called as growth rate. Thus, the growth rate can be expressed mathematically. An organism or a part of the organism can produce more cells in a variety of ways. The growth rate shows an increase that may be arithmetic or geometrical. First, in arithmetic growth, following mitotic cell divisions, only one daughter cell continues to divide while the other differentiate and matures. 
means in arithmetic division each division produce two cells in that two cells one cell become permanent and the other cell divide example plant length root elongating at a constant rate next second one geometrical growth in this type of growth initial growth is slow which is called as lag phase growth increases rapidly there after at an exponential rate which is called as log phase here both the progeny cells following mitotic cell division retain the ability to divide and continuous means in geometric growth dividing cell continue by growth example fruit weight in stationary phase the growth is slow down with limited nutrient supply if we plot the parameter of growth against time we get a typical sigmoid or s curve a sigmoid is a characteristic of living organism growing in natural environment it is typical for all cells tissues and organs of a plant quantitative comparison between the growth of living systems can be two kinds first one is agr absolute growth rate and the second one is rgr relative growth rate in absolute growth rate measurement and comparison of the total growth per unit time is considered in relative growth rate the growth of the given system per unit time as percentage of initial size is considered the formula of relative growth rate is equal to growth per unit time by initial size into 100 for example have a look on to the slide of the two leaves they are different sizes but show the same absolute increase in area in the given time my dear students look at the slide of two leaves which one is higher relative growth rate okay i will tell you in these two leaves according to relative growth rate formula first leaf show higher relative growth rate next we will discuss conditions for growth my dear students try to write down what you think are the necessary condition for growth your list may have water oxygen and nutrients as they are all are very essential for growth first one water due to water plant cells grow in size by cell enlargement turgidity of cells helps in extension so the plant growth and further development is linked to the water status of the plant this water provides the medium for enzymatic activities need for the growth next oxygen oxygen helps in releasing metabolic energy essential for growth activities and the next nutrients nutrients also plays an important role in plant growth these nutrients are classified into macro and micro element as you know macro element means which required in large quantity for plant growth and micro nutrients means which require less quantity for plant growth these nutrients are required synthesis of protoplasm and act as source of energy in addition every plant has an optimum temperature for its growth environmental signals such as light and gravity also affect certain phases of growth next we will discuss differentiation dedifferentiation and redifferentiation first one differentiation differentiation means the cells derived from root and shoot apical meristems and cambium and differentiate and mature to perform specific functions in this differentiation primary meristematic cell become permanent during differentiation cells undergo minor as well as major structural changes both in their cell walls and protoplasm for example to form a tertiary element the cells would lose their protoplasm and they also develop very strong elastic lignocellulosic secondary cell walls to carry water to long distances 
even under extreme conditions. Plants show another interesting phenomenon, de-differentiation. In this de-differentiation, the living differentiated cells have lost the capacity to divide and can regain the capacity of division under certain conditions for the formation of meristems, interfascicular cambium and cough cambium from fully differentiated parenchyma cells. Redifferentiation In redifferentiation, such meristems or tissues are able to divide and produce cells that once again lost the capacity to divide but mature to perform specific functions. Next, we will discuss about development. Development is term that includes all changes that an organism goes through during its life cycle from germination of seed to senescence. Means it includes germination, plasmatic growth, differentiation, senescence which is also called as growing old and cell death. Development can be affected by many environmental factors. Plants follow different pathways in response to the environment or phases of life to form different kinds of structures. This ability is called plasticity. Example, heterophily. This heterophily can be classified by developmental heterophily and environmental heterophily. In developmental heterophily, different types of leaf shape observed in young stage and mature stages of plant. Example, cotton, coriander. In environmental heterophily, the leaf shape can change according to environment. Example, buttercup or it is also called as ronan killers. Next, development. In plants, is dependent on both extrinsic and intrinsic factors. Intrinsic factors are intracellular by genetic or intercellular by chemicals. And extrinsic factors include light, temperature, water, oxygen, nutrition. Next, let's move into plant growth regulators topic. These are small, simple molecules of diverse chemical composition. Plant growth regulators are variously described as Plant growth substances or plant hormones are also called as phytohormones. These plant growth regulators can be broadly divided into two groups based on their function. In living plant body, they are first one plant growth promoters and next second one plant growth inhibitors. First group of plant growth regulators are involved in growth promoting activities such as cell division, cell enlargement, tropic growth, flowering, fruiting and seed formation. So that these plant growth regulators are named as plant growth promoters. Example, auxins, gibberellins and cytokinin. The other group of plant growth regulators responds to wounds and stresses of biotic and abiotic origin and also involved in various growth inhibiting activities such as dormancy and abscission. The gaseous plant growth regulator ethylene could fit in both plant growth promoter and plant growth inhibitor. Let's discuss the discovery of plant growth regulators. Interestingly, the discovery of each of the five major groups of plant growth regulators has been accidental. Charles Darwin and his son Francis Darwin observed phototropism in coleoptiles of canary grass. Phototropism means responding to unilateral illumination by growing towards the light source and concluded that the tip of the coleoptile was the site of transmutable influence that caused the bending of the entire coleoptile. Oxygen was isolated by F. W. Bent from the tips of the coleoptiles of oat seedlings. Next, the Buchanan disease, which is also called as foolish seedling disease in rice seedlings. It is caused by a fungal pathogen 
Gibberella fusicori. Kurosawa reported the appearance of symptoms of the disease in uninfected rice seedlings when they were treated with sterile filtrate of fungus. Later it is identified as gibberellic acid. Skoog and Miller identified and crystallized the cytokinesis promoting active substance that they termed as kinetin. Cousins confirmed that volatile substance was releasing from ripened oranges that hastened the ripening of stored unripened bananas. This substance identified as ethylene which is a gaseous plant growth hormone. Next, we will discuss about physiological effects of phytohormones. First, we will discuss about auxins. Auxins are discovered by Darwin and auxins are first isolated from human urine. These auxins are synthesized from root tips and shoot tips. Charles Darwin working on canary grass plant he observed that decapitated canary grass plant shows no bending and when the tip of the canary grass was not removed, it shows bending towards light. He noticed that this is phototropism and due to presence of auxin hormone. F. W. Bent conducted experiments on oat coleoptile. Generally, two types of auxins were noticed. They are natural auxins synthetic auxins. IAA, IBA are natural auxins. The expanded form of IAA is indolecetic acid and IBA is indole butyric acid. Next, naphthalene acetic acid, 2,4-dichlorophenaxy acetic acid are examples for synthetic auxins. Next, we will discuss functions of auxins. Auxins are Responsible for apical dominance means when shoe tips are removed, usually results in the growth of lateral birds. Due to this phenomenon, this is widely applied in tea plantation and hedge making. Auxin help to initiate root formation in stem cuttings. This application is widely used for plant propagation in horticulture. These auxins promote flowering in pine apples and also promote parthenocarpic fruits. Parthenocarpy means without fertilization, the ovary develops into fruit. Example, we observe parthenocarpy in tomatoes. Auxins are widely used as herbicides. For example, 2,4-dichlorophenaxy acetic acid widely used to kill dicotyledonous plants. It is used to prepare weed-free lungs. Auxins help to promote cell division and xylem differentiation. Auxins promote abscission of old leaves and fruits. Abscission means detachment from the plant. Auxins prevent abscission of young leaves and fruits. Let's discuss about another phytohormone, gibberellin. Kurosawa discovered gibberellins. There are more than hundreds of gibberellins reported from widely different organisms. They are denoted as GA1, GA2 and GA3. GA3 was one of the first gibberellins to be discovered. All gibberellins are acidic in nature. Gibberellins are synthesized in germinating seeds, internodes. Gibberellins increase the length of axis is used to increase the length of grape stalks. Gibberellins improve size and shape of the apples. They also delay senescence. Senescence means growing old. Due to delaying senescence, fruits can be left on the tree longer so as to extend market period. GA3 is used to speed up malting process in brewing industry. Sugarcane stores carbohydrates as sugar in their stems. Spraying gibberellins on sugarcane crop increases the length of sugarcane stem so that the yield is increased as much as 20 tons per acre. Spraying gibberellins on juvenile conifers hastens the maturity period, thus leading to early seed production. Gibberellins also promote bolting in beet, cabbages and many plants with rosette habit. 
bolting means elongation of internodal region next we will discuss about another phytohormone cytokinins cytokinins are discovered by skoog and miller gliadin is extracted from corn kernel coconut milk natural cytokinins are synthesized in regions where rapid cell division occur example root apex developing shoot buds and young fruits etc cytokinins promote cell division and also formation of chloroplastin leaves cytokinins promote lateral shoot growth and adventitious shoot formation cytokinin helps to overcome apical dominance and also promote nutrient mobilization which helps in the delay of leaf senescence next we will discuss about gaseous plant growth hormone ethylene it is synthesized in large amounts by tissues undergoing senescence and from ripening fruits ethylene shows triple response it means when we apply ethylene on newly germinating seeds it shows horizontal growth of seedling swelling of the axis and apical hook formation in dicot seedlings ethylene promotes senescence and abscission of plant organs especially leaves and flowers ethylene is highly effective in fruit ripening it enhances the respiration rate during ripening of fruits this rise in the rate of respiration is called respiratory climactic it initiates flowering and for synchronizing fruit set in pineapples it induces flowering in mango ethylene breaks seed dormancy and bud dormancy it also promote formation of female flowers in cucumber and also promote root growth and root hair formation ethylene promotes internode and petiole elongation in deep water rice plants it helps leaves or upper part of the shoot to remain above water this ethylene is synthesized in places where abscission occur ethylene breaks seed dormancy in peanut seed and bud dormancy in potato tubers the aqueous form of ethylene is called ethephon it promotes fruit ripening in tomatoes and apples it accelerates abscission in flowers and fruits and thinning of fruit wall we observe in cotton cherry walnut it promotes female flowers in cucumber to increase their yield next we will move into another plant growth regulator abscisic acid it acts as general plant growth inhibitor and inhibitor of plant metabolism in mid 1960s three chemicals are isolated inhibitor b abscission 2 dormin later these three chemicals are identified as abscisic acid abscisic acid is synthesized in gut cells chloroplast abscisic acid inhibit seed germination and stimulate the closure of stomata in the epidermis and increases the tolerance of plant to various kinds of stresses so that abscisic acid is called stress hormone it also plays an important role in seed development maturation and dormancy by inducing dormancy abscisic acid helps seeds to withstand desiccation and other factors and favorable for growth abscisic acid act as antagonist to gibberellins next let's discuss about seed dormancy seed dormancy means inability to germinate even if favorable conditions are present a seed may remain viable but unable to germinate or grow for several reasons this can be classified into external or internal condition internal conditions may be due to hard seed coat immature embryo chemicals like phenolic acid abscisic acid some seeds of domestic plants may be limited only by lack of moisture or warm temperature to distinguish the situation seed physiologists have used two terms first one is quiescence and second one is dormancy quiescence means 
it is the condition of a seed when it is unable to germinate only because of favorable external conditions normally required for growth or not present next dormancy it is the condition of a seed when it fails to germinate because of internal conditions even the external conditions like temperature moisture atmosphere are suitable the dormancy of seeds may be caused by hard seed coats that prevent uptake of water or oxygen for example this type of dormancy is seen in seeds of pabaci plants such type of dormancy caused by hard seed coats can be broken by scarification method in scarification hard seed coat is ruptured or weakened mean many seeds will not germinate until they have been exposed to low temperature in moist condition in the presence of oxygen for weeks to months example polygonum the practice of layering the seeds during winter in layers of moist and peat is called stratification or pre-chilling method next we will discuss about photoperiodism my dear students do you know what is photoperiodism photoperiodism means in some plants flowering is depend on exposure of light duration it is known that not only the duration of light period but the duration of is also equal importance hence it can be said that flowering in certain plants depends not only on a combination of light and dark exposures but also their relative duration this response of plants to periods of day or night is termed photoperiodism and it has been hypothesized that there is a hormonal substance that is responsible for flowering this hormonal substance migrate from leaves to shoot apices for inducing flowering only when the plants are exposed to the necessary injective photoperiod based upon the exposure of light duration the plants are classified into three types first one long day plants second one short day plants and third one day neutral plants the plants which required the exposure to light for a period exceeding a well defined critical duration is called long day plants and the plants which exposed to light for a period less than this critical duration before flowering is called short day plants plants which has no such correlation between exposure to light duration and induction of flowering responses are called day neutral plants till now we learned about photoperiodism let us learn about vernalization which is also related to flowering vernalization is defined as the method of inducing early flowering in plants by pre treatment at low temperature qualitative and quantitative requirement of low temperature to flowering is called vernalization some important food plants such as wheat barley rye have two kinds of varieties they are winter and spring varieties the spring varieties is normally planted in the spring and comes to flower to produce grain before the end of the growing season winter varieties however if planted in spring would normally fail to flower and therefore not yield grain until its second year hence they are planted in autumn is vernalized in the early winter and those apices which are competent to initiate flowering inflorescence development is completed in the following spring and a crop of grain can be harvested in the summer or early autumn another example of vernalization is seen in biennial plants biennials are monocarpic plants that flower and die in the second season example sugar beet cabbages carrot biennials may be induced to flower in the same season by meeting their temperature requirement so my dear students we discussed about plant growth and development various types of phytohormones and their functions seed dormancy 
photo periodism in this session thank you all thank you for this session